What's up family? Spencer Mac here. Topic of this video, vitamin K2 and vitamin D. Now this information does not strictly apply to just the carnivore diet, though since I'm going through the carnivore diet, I'm finding all of the different nutrients that seem to be deficient in the diet and studying them independently and choosing whether or not to supplement them. Vitamin K2 is one that I'm choosing to supplement. It is responsible for shuttling the calcium in the body and making sure it ends up in the right place. If you're familiar with Dr. Weston Price's research, he considered it the X factor that was necessary for the proper mineralization of your bones and your teeth. And purportedly, up to 80% of individuals in this day and age are deficient in it. It lowers cardiovascular risk, increases bone mineral density, the health of your teeth, the health of your skin, lowers risk of prostate cancer, and has even been shown to boost testosterone. But I believe that was only in rodents. <clears throat> On that note, it pairs very well with vitamin D, which as we're pretty much all familiar with, I'm making right now. Now you endogenously produce vitamin D whenever you get proper UV radiation, so to speak. Now, interesting enough, it's only in the midday hours that the sun is strong enough to activate the vitamin D production in your body. If you're further in the northern or southern hemisphere, away from the equator, the smaller that window is, and there are even parts of the year where you cannot produce it due to the fact that you're just not getting enough sun. There's an excellent website I found that actually shows you based on your longitude what time of day you can produce the vitamin D. Now, that being said, I even looked into some studies showing that Caucasian surfers, even though they spent ample time in the sun, were still not in optimal levels of vitamin D. I've seen research showing a correlation between higher vitamin D, higher testosterone. Higher vitamin D is also necessary for calcium absorption, bone mineral density, as well as multiple other factors. Now, I was always hesitant to supplement with it because it's actually a hormone, not a vitamin. However, seeing multiple benefits with it, I am more and more interested in it. One of the dangers is that supplementing too much vitamin D actually leads to calcification. However, that's where vitamin K2 comes in. Vitamin D boosts the absorption of the calcium. Vitamin K2 makes sure that the calcium gets to the right place. So these two combined seem to be a pretty powerful combo. I am choosing to supplement them right now because I am low in both of these when I look at the nutrient ratios in mine. Um, there are multiple forms of vitamin K2. I'm out here just sweating it up. Just got done hitting the midday session too, so. Whew, nice and awake. Vitamin D, baby. Also, if you catch sunshine, don't wash off afterwards. Don't use soap, because supposedly you can actually wash away the vitamin D that you're producing. I believe it might even be up to 24 hours, 12 hours. Either way, be conscious of that. You can actually wash it off. Um, so there are multiple forms of vitamin K2, MK4, MK7, MK, there's like 9 and 11, different length chains. MK7 is largely produced by fermented bacteria, and natto, the fermented soybean, is the highest source that we know of. Now they both kind of have different actions in the body. Um, I'm most interested in MK4 and MK7. MK4 is the one found most frequently in animals. Uh, so you can get it through grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, uh, foie gras or goose liver, um, grass-fed liver. Emu oil supposedly is the highest content for an animal product. However, all of that being said, what they've shown to be the most optimal levels, 100 to 200 UG a day, is very difficult to reach just through animal foods. That's another reason I'm choosing to supplement it. I might actually try natto again. It was one of my old favorite foods back when I was vegan. I might actually try natto once a week or so because there's so much 
in it, it's actually a good five to seven day dose in a single serving. Um, and other than that, I'm choosing to supplement. I found this brand right here, Divine Bounty, vitamin K2 and D3 combo. Uh, Price-wise, it was right on point, and it's 500 mcgs as opposed to 200. So you really have to take one of these every other day, um, and it's got MK7 and MK4 in it. So it's actually pretty cheap. It comes to like nine cents a day. Uh, I read an excellent summary article on vitamin K2 by Chris Masterjohn. I'll put the link down below. You guys can check it out. I have a link to that supplement, the one that I chose, down below. It is an affiliate link. Any use of those links goes directly to supporting the channel and it's much appreciated. So vitamin K2 and D3, they go hand in hand. As I said, be careful about supplementing vitamin D without K2. And if you have personal experience, information, resources on these topics, please share it. I intermittently come out with different releases of different nutrients as I learn more information on them. So the insights you guys share are extremely helpful. I appreciate it. Um, as well, any other ideas for video topics, please share. And subscribe if you have not already. Share if you want to support the channel. And hit the notification bell so we can be right on time together. Awesome, guys. It's always a pleasure. See you all in the next one. Aloha.